James Olivizos. I work for Sagetti UK. I'm the VP of our Centre of Excellence, and my responsibilities include uh, defining our testing services portfolio, uh, promoting that portfolio, and ensuring that uh, we have the delivery capability to deliver that. A managed testing service is a, is a more mature way of delivering testing for an organisation. Uh, usually it takes a little bit more time to set up and so often you find that uh, a managed testing service is, is a multi-year engagement, typically you know, three to five years. Um, it involves some key elements that you typically won't find in a traditional time and materials engagement. One of those elements is a, is a shared resource pool. Often, often testers work on individual projects and so they're perhaps not as utilised as effectively as they could be if, if they were pooled as a, as, a, as a group resource for a managed testing service. It also requires a standard engagement model so that everybody in a customer organisation understands the way to engage with testing. Often in big organisations, testing has evolved, it's very inconsistent, that, that results in cost inefficiencies, different ways of doing things and perhaps variable quality. Uh, so by having a standard engagement model, that allows organisations to agree internally how they want to engage with a, a, an independent third party testing provider. It also has a catalogue of services, so it's clear to the whole business community and customer community what services that managed testing service will provide, uh, so that they understand clearly if there's something else they need outside of that catalogue, that they may have to um, wait some time for that service to be spun up within the testing service or perhaps go to an alternative supplier. So it avoids um, disappointment or uh, misaligned expectations around what the service will provide. And perhaps most importantly, it is usually governed by uh, service level agreements and key performance indicators so that a customer who's paying for a multi-year testing service can actually measure that service against service levels and have a view as to whether it exceeds expectations, meets expectations or is below expectations. Uh, and in that sense, it's, it's a more mature method of delivering testing and, and if it's structured properly, the SLIs and K, SLAs and KPIs could also be used to drive innovation so that there's continual improvement, which is often something internal test teams are perhaps not uh, uh, as mature at, at affecting within the organisation. So the way Sajedi engages with a customer can be done on, on several levels. The most obvious way, and, and often this happens is a customer has a, a short-term need for some burstable capacity or additional testing capacity. So if, um, if they're aware of us or we're talking to them, they may then decide to pick up the phone and say, I need a few testers for a period of time. And that's typically a, an initial engagement delivered on, on a time and materials basis. Uh, invariably, where we have provided uh, staff augmentation effectively, uh, eventually, once we've demonstrated our capability and our approach, we often then perhaps get given a project to own in its entirety with respect to testing, where we have some control over the test processes, methodologies, skill sets and tools. Uh, and, uh, and again, once we've demonstrated that we've done that successfully in terms of within time and budget and to the right level of quality, um, if the organisation is mature enough, then we can open up a, a conversation, a dialogue about maturing it as a managed testing service. What, what we're seeing in the marketplace is big organisations are going to market now with requests for proposals, RFPs, and they're actually saying our testing is okay, but we're struggling to get it to improve, so we would now like somebody else to come in, uh, take over the testing as a managed testing service and drive innovation, um, make it a better testing service which improves quality, um, but also uh, get a higher value and return for the investment of testing. If you set up a managed testing service, the, all, the, all the tenets of a testing centre of excellence should be uh, applied. So a managed testing service now, you know, should have a common engagement model, service levels, KPIs, a shared resource pool and all the governances and methodologies around it. Some organisations don't want to outsource their testing, instead they like assistance to develop their own internal testing centre of excellence. And, and we can support that as well because we have defined methodologies like TMAP, we have our reference model for test process improvement, TPI Next, uh, and so we understand how to implement a testing, a mature testing methodology that's been proven 
and more importantly, we know what's it once it's implemented, we have a reference model for continually improving that. And some of our engagements, we build in um, six-month assessments of our own managed testing services so that we can demonstrate how we're maturing them and making them more cost-effective. But where an organisation doesn't want to outsource it, we can also support them by building their own internal testing centre of excellence. And um, while that's a great thing to do, invariably uh, you can only move as fast as the customer organisation can move itself. So often what we find is we can support that, but sometimes the time frames for them to realise the benefits of that COE are perhaps uh, longer in duration than, than otherwise if they just given us um, an outsourced managed testing service. Testing transformation is, is an offering that we've developed within Sugeti, and it's slightly different to the typical model around uh, time and materials based testing, and it's a level of maturity even beyond a managed testing service. And in, in essence, it's, it's an outsourced testing service where Sugeti takes ownership of everything involved in the testing process in terms of the methodology, the people, the tools, and everything that's involved. But in doing so, we sign up to service level agreements and key performance indicators as we would for a traditional managed testing service. But in addition to that, we commercially underwrite savings in the cost of testing for our customer. And it's, um, it requires, it's a level of sophistication and maturity uh, that is required both in terms of our delivery model and our customer. But we've demonstrated that it, it's achievable and as a result, we, we are able to commit to guaranteeing savings um, uh, in, in terms of the cost of testing, in addition to signing up to financial penalties if we don't meet certain service levels and, and KPIs. And for us within in the group, we see it as the next evolution of how testing should be delivered because it truly incentivizes a supplier like Sugeti to be innovative uh, and to increase the quality, continue to improve the testing, but at the same time having the confidence and the courage to commercially underwrite a significant amount of savings for our customer. I, th I think if organisations are considering outsourcing testing, they should, they should look for a supplier that is, is prepared to, to commit to delivering these benefits. They, they should certainly get a much better testing service that they're getting at the moment. Um, basically should translate to a speedier service and higher quality products which should drive business benefits realisation and consumer experience. I think on top of that they should also expect to get the benefit of continual improvement. Many organisations have outsourced um, their testing to pure plays in years gone by and while they've certainly achieved a cost saving I think they're realising that perhaps there isn't really a, an incentive for their supplier to drive innovation or conti continually improve. So the saving is made and it's, it's a saving that can be made every year, but beyond that there's no real further direction for continual improvement and continual efficiencies. So I think they should expect you know, not only a better testing service, a faster testing service, a cheaper testing service, but they should also expect a supplier to continually improve that service and leverage um, all of their, their global artefacts and accelerators and thought leadership so that when the next new thing arrives in testing, whether it be a tool, technology or an approach, um, a customer should expect an outsourced provider to, to bring that to them without having to be chased for it. So I think they're the, they're the key things uh, that I think an organisation should look for. Right Shore Delivery uh, in Sujeti's world is, is effectively a global delivery model whereby we can provide uh, testing professionals with the right skills in whichever location or locations our, our customer needs them in. I think globally within the group we have uh, about 10,000 testing professionals, so these are people who have chosen careers in, in software testing and quality assurance. Uh, they're not developers who test occasionally. Uh, these are professional testers who have chosen a career. And right sure for us means making sure that when a customer has a need to have people in, in the US, in mainland Europe and, and offshore in India, that we're able to provide that, flex those resources up and down as required uh, to meet our customer needs. So it's, it's basically a global delivery model. 
couple of ways. Right shore means that they, they can have the local expertise in, in those geographies where they need to have it. They can also have um, uh, larger teams in, in a more cost-effective geography, uh, such as our uh, many of our centres in, in, in India. Uh, additionally, that also allows them in, in certain industries to do what we call follow the sun testing. So because you have test teams in different time zones, while development teams have released software and gone home or gone out for their evening in London, you can have teams that are offset six or eight hours further on in the world who are continually testing. So if you like, it can be a useful way of reducing that traditional downtime when workers knock off in one geography and then have to wait some 12 or 13 hours to start work the next day. Uh, software testing is difficult for a number of reasons. I think, uh, I think in bigger organisations the, the challenge is that many things are done inconsistently. Um, I personally think that software testing should be quite easy. Uh, if, you, if you adopt a, a mature methodology and you adopt the right governance structures, then I think it, it, it is potentially a very simplistic activity, although a highly valuable one. But I think it's difficult, not in itself, I think it's difficult about ensuring that an effective t uh, software testing function can actually engage with, with the culture, the processes and the technology of customer organisations. So I think the biggest challenges are, if you like, ensuring that customers are, are mature enough in some of their internal workings to engage with a very mature and sophisticated thought-led software testing vendor. And that's why we see, um, we see our customers sometimes having to come on a journey with us, starting with perhaps staff augmentation, time and materials, and at a time that suits them, maturing that into higher value services, whether it's managed testing services and ultimately transformational testing services where the, the, the cost savings are underwritten. But we recognise that takes time and that we, it's not for us to harass or force uh, customer organisations. So I think some of the biggest challenges are, are um, adapting and effectively plugging into the internal mechanics of, of customer organisations. And I think that's where the bigger challenges come from rather than the act of testing itself. Uh, software testing shouldn't be expensive. Um, it, it, it shouldn't be if, if the right uh, methodologies and tools and, and practices are used. Um, I think um, if you think of it as a, as a value proposition, you can over-test, you can spend too much uh, money on testing. Um, I think the challenge is to make sure that your testing and quality assurance strategies align with your appetite for business risk. If you're, um, if you're putting satellites into space or you're, you're building weapons platforms, there's a level of quality uh, that needs to be uh, attained. If you're working in a highly regulated market, there's a level of quality that has to be attained. And in those cases, although it may cost a significant sum of money, that may pale into insignificance when compared to a regulatory fine or litigation for safety critical things not working. However, on the other side, there are plenty of industries that don't have to do that and they're happy just to get some feature sets out quickly in order to beat competitors um, and, and perhaps not to the highest quality either. So I think it's important that you, you align your software testing strategy to the, to the business appetite for risk and you don't over test, but equally you don't under test. But it shouldn't in its own right be expensive because it, you should be able to link any investment in software testing to measurable business benefit. I like software testing, sadly, because I think it's a great way of having a direct influence on, on a customer's business in, in a positive way. And I've been, uh, I've been involved in uh, software testing and managing test processes and setting them up for 15 years now. I was a, I was a developer prior to that on uh, military systems, um, surface warships and submarines. And, and so I learned a very... Uh, I learned a very structured way of ensuring high quality software, but when I came to London I also realised quite early that that was overkill for a lot of, a lot of organisations. So I think the real challenge and the enjoyment in software testing is, is tailoring it so that it delivers the right benefit to a customer within their, their price point. And I, I personally think with the more mature services around managed testing services and transformation and the right short delivery model, I think the fun bit is pulling on all of those elements and putting together a portfolio of services 
which you start with a customer, but over time when they're ready, you can move them up to higher value testing services at a point in time that they're ready to do so. So that's a good question. I don't, I don't think I'm frustrated with the industry. I think, I think what frustrates me is where I can see an obvious need within a customer organization <clears throat> where we have an offering that I think can deliver real benefit. And in my mind, because I'm, I have a sense of urgency about <clears throat> the things I do in business and in life, I often think if a, if a benefit can be, can be realized for a customer, then I naturally want to move quickly so that they start realizing that quicker for a longer period of time. <clears throat> Excuse me. So I don't see it as a frustration at a customer, but I just think sometimes you, you, you have an offering and a solution to a customer's challenge. And the only frustration is that we can't maximize that benefit for our customer. So testing itself, I, you know, because I've spent so long in it, I'm, I'm never frustrated by the industry. I think it's actually an exciting industry and it always gets a refresh with the internet boom or the boom in online gaming or the boom in technology or mobile devices. I think the one constant is, uh, is not being able to bring the benefits to bear as fast and to the size that we would like for our customers because ultimately that's what we're paid to do. I think the relationship um, has changed over many years. I, I think it's, it's always been in improving relationship and I think I think now with uh, a lot of the agile development methodologies I think the relationship is almost embedded where where there's I think there's a, a, a more healthier respect that effectively uh, both uh, both roles are, are, are part of rapid delivery teams uh, stand-up meetings scrum masters uh, and, and the like and so I think they, they there's a healthy respect for each other and I also think within agile software testers are having to become technically more proficient. And so I think the level of respect from some of the developers is perhaps increasing over time as a result. And often some of the best technical testers are ex-developers, um, which ironically is how I found my way into, into testing to begin with. So I think it's, uh, it's been maturing over many years, the relationship has been improving, but I think now they, they recognize rather than an over the fence, not my problem type attitude, it's become perhaps a we're all in it together attitude so we succeed together or we, or we fail together.